Hello friend, the rod of this cord is regarded as one of the best items in the entire game. It allows you to teleport to any point that you click on at the cost of health. This lets you dodge enemies with ease, and with this, the Moon Lord's Phantasmal Death Ray won't be a problem at all. Use it too many times in a row however, and you'll die. Being so versatile, it's extremely rare and difficult to acquire, which is why I'm here to show you an AFK farm to get one. I'm Zuzukorn and I aim to entertain you, encourage you, and offer you a place to call home. So subscribe now and join the Zuzukorn family. By the way, feel free to follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well. The rod of this cord is extremely rare, with a 1 in 500 chance of being dropped by Chaos Elementals in Normal World, and a 1 in 400 chance in Expert World. That doesn't seem too bad, doesn't it? Well, yes, but no. The problem is, Chaos Elementals are relatively rare. They have a low spawn rate, which is what makes getting a rod of this cord so difficult. To make things worse, the 1.4 update made it such that Chaos Elementals don't spawn when you're not moving. This basically kills every old AFK farm out there. There are some workarounds around this, which I'll cover later. In essence, almost every old rod of this cord farm doesn't really work anymore. Those that still work might not be full AFK, because you might have to deal with the hollowed mimics yourself. So I present to you an improved design that works in Terraria 1.4. Fully AFK. There are many issues to address when building a rod of this cord farm, so I'll bring you through them as we build the farm. First of all, we will need a large empty space. I recommend using sticky dynamite to blow up a large area. Make sure that you build this in the cavern layer. You can use a depth meter to confirm this. The underground layer will not spawn chaos elementals, so don't blame me if you build it wrong. Next, we have to understand spawn mechanics. If you look at this diagram here, enemies will only spawn in the orange area, meaning not too near and not too far from the player. If you don't really understand how it works, just follow along. First, build a long row of pearl stone using 175 blocks. You can go a little bit more if you want to. If you don't want to risk corrupting your world, give a little more allowance between the path and the sides. This path is what will spawn the hollowed enemies. Next, grab any block that you like. I'll be using snow bricks. Then, measure 50 blocks upwards from the path. Just simply place the 50 blocks upwards, clearing anything in the way. This is mostly for measurement purposes, so you don't have to be too hung up on doing it perfectly. Similarly, build 50 blocks downwards from the path. Once you've got your nice measurements done, build all the way across the bottom of your farm. The number of blocks don't matter exactly, so just make sure you can surround the pearl stone path. Once you finish that, do the same for the top, all the way across. Finally, combine and join the two sides to form a complete box. Like I said, this is mostly as a measurement, so you can actually do without this if you measure properly. Once done, you should have a nice box surrounding your farm. This box represents the maximum spawn radius of enemies. In other words, enemies can only spawn within the box. With that done, remove any stray blocks in the box. We don't want any blocks other than the pearl stone to ensure that only hollow enemies spawn. It's a little tricky to get rid of every block when you can't really see, so a tip would be to place torches using smartcast, which might catch any stragglers. Make sure you mine away the hard mode ores as well, which you can't blow up with dynamite. Then, build a box under the row of pearl stone and place a trapdoor as an entrance. The exact dimensions don't matter yet, because we'll adjust it later. Build a zigzag shape leading to the hole like so, then hammer in the sides twice to make it into a smooth slope. Enemies will run up the slope and fall into the hole. Once you've got that set up, all you need to do now is pour a bucket of lava into the hole and the basic farm is done. This basic design is similar to Happy Days farms from a long time ago, but all the edits are new and will be required for 1.4. Then, build a platform 3 spaces directly underneath the lava trap, so you can stand with your head to the ceiling. What this does is kind of protect you from Chaos Elementals, who might teleport into the box. The next problem that we have to address is the spawning of Chaos Elementals. From the Terraria 1.4 update, when we don't move for 5 seconds, Chaos Elementals will now stop spawning. This means that we can't just stand there and AFK for hours anymore. However, there are a few workarounds. The first and my most preferred method is to equip a frog leg. This enables auto jump. 
This means that holding down spacebar will cause your character to jump continuously. Frog legs can be obtained from crates, so they are not too hard to get. Luckily for us, the continuous jumping counts as moving, so Chaos Elementals will still spawn. Otherwise, you can also use a flying mount, which counts as moving due to its slight ascent every second. Another choice would be to fly using wings while equipping the Soaring Insignia. Now with the basic design and method established, we can now look at working around Hollowed Mimics. Hollowed Mimics will spawn occasionally and will stay in their chest form unless damaged. We don't want them to stay in their chest form because this reduces enemy spawns. Yet when we trigger them, we'll probably die, since this farm is AFK. Enchanted Swords are another enemy that are likely to kill you. The simple workaround here is to set a spawn point directly below the farm. So expand the chamber and fill it with walls, but not covering the area above the platforms. If you place walls above the platforms, you will block Chaos Elemental spawns, so just be careful with that. Once you've done so, add a table, a chair, and a light source to check whether the housing is suitable. Once you've confirmed so, you can replace the table with the bed, or just add the bed in. With this, we can set our spawn point right here. If you notice, once we die, we respawn right at the spot of the bed. So just shift it directly underneath the platforms and you're done. Every time you get killed by a hollowed mimic, you simply respawn and get back into position. The next problem we have are enemies spawning below us. Enemies can sometimes spawn under us, even beyond the spawn limits. So just simply pour a few buckets of lava to stop them from spawning. The farm is looking pretty good already, but we can make it even better and improve on other weaknesses. The current design of the trap is not deep and wide enough, so just simply extend the shape and make the trap taller. There, much better. This prevents the slimes from jumping out, but just remember to reposition the bed as well. The next problem would be killing the skeleton merchant and triggering hollowed mimics. The skeleton merchant and hollowed mimics both reduce spawn rates of chaos elementals. So this is done simply by placing a few dart traps. Place the dart traps facing the outside of the trap, then place actuators on them. Wire them to a switch and actuate it once. Alternatively, you can use an actuation rod. Then make sure you remove the actuators with a wire cutter, and then you've got non-solid traps that won't block enemies. Simply repeat this for the other side as well. Then wire the traps to a timer in your chamber. You can make 1 second timers, but the mechanic now sells half second and quarter second timers. They don't really make a difference in this case, so just get whatever. Make sure you don't wire the trap door, and make sure your actuators are removed. If done correctly, the dart trap should activate at regular intervals, which will damage NPCs and hollowed mimics to trigger them. Just to be clear, activating the mimics will make you die, but that doesn't matter with the spawn point setup. This is also why I prefer the frog leg, since it puts you in a position instantly, unlike a mount which you have to reactivate yourself. With that done, the farm is now completed. Most of its weaknesses have been addressed. We can now put a heavy object onto the spacebar and AFK farm for a rod of discord. To summarize, this setup will ensure that you stay in position even when you die, so you can go full AFK. Chaos Elementals will simply spawn, then run into the lava and die, allowing you to farm them for their drops. To be honest, it will still take a crazy amount of time to get a rod of discord, but at least we have an AFK farm to do it now, which is just amazing. If you also want to turn this into a blade star farm, just simply summon some spiders with you in the chamber. This AFK farm is for people who want a legitimate AFK method to get one. For those of you who would rather get a rod of discord from a free server or whatever, go ahead. I won't tell you how to play the game. But in return, I expect you not to impose your methods onto other people as well. So all the best in hunting down your very own Rod of Discord. I hope the farm will help you out. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon too for more Terraria guides and coverage. Feel free to check out my Instagram and Twitter as well. This has been ZuzuCoin Games. Have a nice day and have a great week ahead. Bye bye!